Imagine the Earth's atmosphere, also known as the ionosphere, as a thick soap bubble. It is a membrane, a natural electrically charged shield around the Earth, protecting all life from deadly solar radiation. We have to have the atmosphere uh, for survival. I don't think we should do anything to damage it. Without the ionosphere, I'd be fried, you'd be fried. All life on Earth would be fried. In 1912, Nikola Tesla, a visionary genius, saw ways to tame the sky, to make the atmosphere glow. He developed alternating current, high-frequency radio technology, and free energy. He experimented with both high and low frequencies and electromagnetic waves. He envisioned altering the weather and creating shields around the Earth to protect us from missiles. And he claimed he knew how to split the Earth in two. for oil in the ground. I found 26 oil wells over a nine state area and 100% of the time was accurate with just 30 watts of power beaming straight into solid rock. HARP uses a billion watts beam straight into the ionosphere for experiments. Picture these strings on the piano as layers of the earth. Each one has its own frequency. What we used to do is beam radio waves into the ground <clears throat> and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like and we'd say that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like and we say that's crude oil. We were able to identify each frequency. We accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with a billion watts, the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that it could even cause an earthquake. This is the sky about a half hour before the earthquake in China. It's called earthquake lights. Now, that's something that looks similar to the northern lights, and it's something that has happened before other earthquakes, but no one knows what it is, what causes it. It's being studied to see if it could be some kind of warning sign that could be used to predict big earthquakes, but look at that. Nobody knows what causes that. That's fascinating. And it, we've seen reports of those for, for decades, really, but no it's one's actually caught it on tape until just now. That was 30 it's minutes before that major earthquake in China. Facility. It's not the only one like it in the world. Uh, HARP has some, some capabilities that uh, we feel are better than some of the others. You can change the frequencies. Um, you can shift the beam so that you can, you can move it from one part of the, of the ionosphere to another. And it has quite a bit more power than some of the other facilities throughout the world that are doing the same kinds of research. called the magnetosphere protects us. Hart's original patterns were designed to distort or alter the magnetosphere. It's interesting to compare humans and the Earth. The Earth is, has a magnetic field. Humans actually generate a magnetic field too, especially in our hearts and brains. Every cell in our body has a powerful magnetic substance called magnetite, which responds sensitively to magnetic fields in our environment. If HARP is altering the magnetosphere, which is the magnetic field of the Earth and all around it, surely this will have an effect on our health and on our 
physiology. And once they get the energy up into the ionosphere, depending on, on what they want to do, they can uh, create a secondary frequency causing the ionosphere to vibrate, sending that signal back down to the Earth. But this same kind of signal, signals in the same frequency range, can affect uh, human mood. The human brain operates on very low frequencies. For example, when we're thinking, I mean, uh, actively, uh, we're generating about 13, 14 cycles per second. When we're meditating, we're generating eight cycles per second. And when we're asleep, the brain waves are running at about four cycles per second. And HARP is capable of generating all of these frequencies. These kinds of signals can control the human brain. And if you can control these frequencies and multiples of these frequencies and various combinations, you can control all kinds of emotions. You can generate happiness. You could generate uh, uh, sadness. You can generate any mood you want. So what we've done is we've got a cloud generator up here, an ultrasonic nebulizer. It's going to create real water particles, just like you would find in a cloud. What we're seeing now is we're actually filling this chamber with uh, microscopic water particles. You can see that it's almost completely filled with water vapor. It's beginning to condense a little bit on the sides, just so that you can see the detail, we've got a nice dense fog, just like you were sitting inside a cloud at 50,000 feet. At the bottom of the cloud chamber, Dr. Agnew has constructed an ELF wave transmitter, a miniature version of HARP. We're only using 100 watts. It's perfectly safe. When Dr. Agnew turns on the ELF wave transmitter and begins shooting ELF waves into the simulated cloud, the cloud begins to move up to the top of the chamber, taking the moisture with it. If you get down low enough, you can actually see a clear layer above the antenna. It is actually pushing these water particles up, and that's exactly how HARP works. What we've done is we've not only pushed the cloud off of the HARP antenna, but as you can see, our cloud is almost completely gone inside. HARP does exactly the same thing. It, it ionizes the particles, pushes them out into space. Extremely low frequency waves are just like a subwoofer. In your car, you can, you can actually feel the vibrations through your body. ELF waves are the same way. They vibrate the earth, and at right resonant frequencies, they can have devastating effects. When the speaker is activated, ELF waves begin to emit. Tiny vibrations in the sand are detected, and then a few seconds later, the rock representing a fault line shifts. As you can see, in a very few seconds, the resonant frequency built up in our model released the potential energy in the rock. That concussion, on a real scale, would have been felt for 100 miles. These conditions are already set up in the ground. All it takes is the activation energy to make the release happen. This is a small scale, and we're only using 30 watts in this scale.